Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and I mean every last one of us. I mean every last one of us should always be glad and always rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy, my brothers and sisters, he is so worthy to be praised. Every day is a day. The every last one of us. We should always rejoice in the Lord. Always walk into his course with thanksgiving and praise. Not worried about anything. Not stressed out. Because when you know God for yourself, hallelujah, you know God has already worked out your situation. When you know God for yourself, the only thing that you want to do is continue to thank him and praise him and glorify his holy name. That's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing because the God we serve, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us and he handles in the palm of his hands and he is working everything out to his perfect will. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home or to your life or even your prayer closet room, please do so right now today. His arms are open wide. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all things today. Give me all praise today. Give me all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. We thank you, Heavenly Father, God, that we can always count on you, that we can always depend on you, that we can always rely on you. We thank you, Father God, because you make all things new each and every day in our life. We thank you, Father God, because you always available, Father God, for those who seek you, for those who praise you, for those who call upon your name right now today. Father God, your words in the book of Matthew 18 and 19, when two or more gather in your name, hallelujah, then you are in the midst right now. So, Heavenly Father God, we know that you're in the midst right now of this prayer. Father God, we know that you have your arms around us right now today. Oh, Father God, we thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love that you continue to give us each and every day. We thank you, Father God, for how patient you are with us right now today, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive, this powerful message right now today, Father God. That's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Father God, that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, give me your thanks, give me your praise, give me your glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, today is the day, hallelujah, that you have made, and we're so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Oh, Heavenly Father God, let your will be done today, Father God. Let your words go out and should not return by board today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, you are King of kings, you are Lord of lords, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, allow your love to move to this place. Allow your presence to move to this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship, Father God, in this place right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this is your time. This is your moment. That I know for a fact that you're about to show up. That I know for a fact that you're about to show out. I believe and I declare a decree right now today, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today, Jesus. And the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. And you will and you shall get all the thanks, all the praise, all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this is your house. That house that you built on solid ground. That house that you built on solid foundation. That house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, all but Father, you are welcome right now. You are invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's home. Right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's home. Right here in my sister's life. 
Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to lay your hands on every last one of my brothers and sisters right now today. I know they hear right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, allow their cups continue to overflow right now today. Allow their lamps continue to burn for you right now today, Father God. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to do a new thing in my brothers and sisters' life right now today, Father God. Speak a word to them right now today, God. Lift their spirits up right now today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, for a favor right now. In this favor, God, that I'm asking you, Father God. It's for a blessing for my brothers and sisters, for a breakthrough for my brothers and sisters, for a miracle for my brothers and sisters, for you to open up a door for my brothers and sisters. Father God, that you will send rain to my brothers and sisters, that you will put them at the right place at the right time for my brothers and sisters, that you will get them, you will send them a, a, a helping hand right now today, Father God. And Father God, there's not too hard for you. It's not too difficult for you, Father God. And I'm standing on your words. I'm standing on your promise, God, that it's already done. I claim it right now. I receive it right now today. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory be to God. Holy Spirit, you're welcome right now. You are invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary, right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are confident. I'm asking you right now today to control our thoughts, control our minds so we hear your soft still voice. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you know it moved before so we catch the Holy Ghost fire. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to, to touch every last one of my brothers and sisters right now today. As we repent of our sins today, Father God, please forgive us for our sin today. Known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remember our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean state. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am. To always pray, praise, and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters, that one body in Christ. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for service. I'm available for the kingdom, but most of all, Jesus, that I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue, the fruit of my lips about you. And I've got that thing I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I cry out your name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag, that's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory Hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Amen, amen. Today's word is learn how to keep your mouth quiet. It is simple as that. Learn how to keep your mouth quiet because he knows your business, because he tells your business. And the devil cannot read, my brothers and sisters. But the only way that he's always a step ahead of you, my brothers and sisters, is because you have read your mouth a little bit too much. And you wonder why he always beat you to the punch. It's because you're talking too much. Learn how to zip it up. Learn how to put some, some gorilla glue on your lips. Because there's the one word that he's able to always beat you at every punch. And you sit back and say, well, how can he beat me? How, how do he know this? Is it because you talk too much? You on the phone gossiping? Or you out there in, in the streets out there telling everybody what's going on? And you wonder why this certain person was able to do these things to you. Or you wonder why when you got to a certain situation, all hell broke loose. Is because you did it. See now, if you would have kept your mouth quiet, he would never know what you was going through, not with it. See, he can't read at all. He ride the short bus. And I'm going to show you why he can't read. And I'm going to show you why he ride the short bus. But I can tell you why. Why he's always a step ahead of you. I can show you why in the Bible. Why he's always right there. Uh, right there before you get there. It's because you did a lot of this right here. See, a closed mouth 
Nobody won't know what's going on with you. Now, wait. See, if you go in your prayer closet room and you shut the door behind you and it's you and God talking, he can't hear that, not could he? But see, when you all in the open, praying out loud, telling all your business, his ears are attentive. And he said, oh, okay. I know what he about, and I know what he about to do. I know what she about, and I know what she about to do. So when before you get to your destination, and before you about to take off, or you think you about to take off, boom, something happened. And you wonder why, well, how this happened? And the first thing you say, well, the devil always busy. He's busy because you told him about your business. That's how he's busy, because you told your business. See, now, if you had never told your business, he wouldn't be busy, not would he? Come on, now let it make sense, now. How can he be busy if you didn't tell your business? How can he be busy if you ain't sitting there telling me about what's going on? You're gossiping too much. You're talking too much, and you're telling everything. Learn how to be quiet. See, if you learn how to be quiet, you will understand that he can't read. And I'm going to tell you why. Let's turn the Bible to Job chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 6 and 7. It's Job chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 6 and 7. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. One day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. Now, look what happened. The angels came to present. What they were doing, they would present something to God. What they present presented was something that they wrote down. They never spoke to God. They said they presented Present me, they had something in their hand. They had your name on them, my brothers. They had your name on them, my sisters. And they had a bunch of things that the angels would present to God. And they were bragging about you. But when the angel presented to God, the devil couldn't read. But, oh, heaven with this thing, Jesus. The devil couldn't read what the angels had presented on that piece of paper about you. That's why he came. He came to be signified. He came to be known because he thought that the angels was going to run their mouth. He thought that angels was going to sit there and let, let loose. But the angels, who oh, hallelujah, was smarter than him. The angel was 10 steps ahead of him. So the angels, you know what? Let me write this down because if I write it down, I know he can't read. If I write it down, I know he on that short bus. If I write it down, I know he ain't going to be able to comprehend what I'm presenting to the Lord. So this right here tells you Right now today that he cannot read at all. He is illiterate. If you don't know, it's right here in the Bible. The word of God says one day the angels came to present. But they do they present a letter, a proposition to God about you. But the angels were smart enough and wise enough to write it down. Amen. Amen. And Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Now, look, look, how, look how sarcastic God is now. God said, Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered? Do you know why God said, have you considered? Because God already knew he couldn't read neither. So God said, let me just break it down to him because I know he's not on my level, and he's not on the angel. So let me just stoop down on his level and say, let me just speak to him this way. Because I know he can understand this, but he can't understand English. So let me break it down to him this way, because I know that he can't read. So God said, the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. So God had to get on his level a little bit. See, you know what? I know this man can't read. I'm not going to pick at him. I'm not going to laugh at him. I'm not going to sit down and humiliate him. So I'm going to just get on his level and just speak to him. Because I know what the angels brought to me. He couldn't read it if he wanted to. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to somebody right now today. Amen. Amen. So let's turn our Bibles to Habakkuk. And we're going to read chapter 2, verse 2. Again, Habakkuk chapter 2. And we're going to read, um, read verse 2. Then the Lord replied, Write down this revelation and make it plain on the tablet so that a hero may run with it. Now look at God. God still being sarcastic. He said, Write it down. He said, if you Write it down. He can't read that. 
He's telling you right now what to do. He is showing you that he cannot read. He showed you in Joel 1 that he can't read. Now he's showing you in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2, that he still can't read. So if he can't read, how can he be busy if he don't know your business? How can he be busy if he's writing it down? How can he be busy if he's still slobbing on the mouth on the short bus? See, he can't be busy if you don't tell your business. He can't be busy if you don't tell everything. So if you start writing it down, he don't understand it, not could he? Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now today. The Lord said, write it down. The revelation and make it plain on the tablet so that a herald may run with it. Okay, how can he run with it? He can't run with something he don't know to read. Not could he? He can't take it to his agents. He can't take it to his minions because if he can't read, they can't read neither. Not could he? Come on now. Come on, let it make sense now. I turn it back to 1 Peter chapter 5. And we're going to read verse 8. 1 Peter 5. And we're going to read verse 8. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You know why? He's looking and he is wrong just to see who's going to run their mouth. He's looking and wrong just to see who's going to tell anything. Because the moment you start opening your mouth, the moment you start telling everything, that's when he's going to devour you. That's when he's going to eat you alive. That's when he's going to shred you like shreds because he already know what's going on. And you wonder why he got one up on you. You wonder why he always beat you to the punch. It's because you open your mouth. He knows your business because you told your business. The point I'm making to somebody right now today, learn how to be quiet. Learn to keep good information to yourself because your information is not for everybody. Whatever God is showing you, it's meant for you. Whatever God is talking about, it's meant for you. If you want to have a conversation, go in your prayer closet room. He don't understand that neither. But if you start talking and you start expressing yourself or what's going on, or where you about to meet at, or where you about to meet Rico at, that you about to meet Shaquan at, guess what? He already done before Rico get there, right? He already done before Shaquan get there, right? It's because you ran your mouth. Too many people are always saying that the devil's busy. He's only busy because you tell your business. Point I'm saying right now today, learn how to be quiet and keep your mouth shut. Amen? Amen. I don't know who this was for today. I don't know who God is talking to today. But if you know for a fact that he's talking to you and you know you've been talking too much and you wonder why that the enemy is always a step ahead of you, that's why. Learn how to write it down. If you write it down, he can't read it. If you write it down, he can't understand it. If you write it down, he can't comprehend it. Does that make sense to you? And if it does, go and hit Jesus' like button. Go and hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, that I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always follow him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author, the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you're seeing their face. Prayer helps and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep on in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm seven minutes to LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Amen.